Isaiah chapter 16, dealing with the nation of Moab, Lot's uh, son, through one of his daughters, when he fled Sodom and Gomorrah. And looking first to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Send ye the lamb to the ruler of the land from Shelah, these are cities in Moab, to the wilderness, unto the mount of the daughter of Zion, that's Jerusalem. Zion is Jerusalem. For it shall be that as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, and there are some birds like the eagles, when the, when a the bird gets a certain age, get out of the nest, go. Now an eagle will take its eaglet on, on her back and fly and then let the eaglet go. And that eagle will flap his wing, flap her wings. <clears throat> and mother eagle, mother eagle will pick that, that baby up just before it hits the ground and bring it back to the nest. And later on, she'll flap her wings and for that eaglet to fall out. And one of those times, if it don't hit the ground and die, that eagle, its, it's strength and its muscles of its wings will, boom, it'll take off. And it'll go start a light. And there are some birds that, hey, to their young, time to go. See you later. And that's the illustration. And cast out, that's not by a self-will. It won't be done voluntarily by Moab. They're going to be forced. So the daughters of Moab shall be at the fords of Arnon. So they're going to be brought to these fords, not because they want to, but as a bird that's cast out. Take counsel. Execute judgment. That's what the Lord wants. He wants proper judgment. Take counsel. Get together with those that have the know. And pass judgment. Make thy shadow as the night in the midst of the dew day. Hide the outcast. Bray not him that wandereth. Second Advent. Let my outcast dwell in thee, Moab. It's the Jews now running away from the Antichrist. And Moab, give them a place. Now, we have an entire book to Esau. And I always forget what they name. Uh, one of the minor prophets. Dedicated to Esau. And what Esau did was when Judah, when, when Nebuchadnezzar's army came. And of course, Judah's going to run. You, I would too. And Esau, when they saw the uh, Judah run, they captured Judah. I mean, they're, they're brothers too, because Esau, Edom, is Jacob's brother. So this would be his nephews and nieces. And they took the Jews that they captured and caught on the run from Nebuchadnezzar, and they turned them over to the Babylonian army. Hey, look what I found. And the Jews saw a place against Nebuchadnezzar and they saw it, one of the places was Esau and they turned him over. And what God's saying to Moab now is, hey, listen, my people are going to look for a place. They need a place. They're going to, In the tribulation period, they're going to be fiercely, fiercely gathered up for the slaughter. Revelation chapter 12, that that Israel woman that has the child. That Israel, God gives her wings to a place prepared for her. Some people think it's Sel Petra. Maybe it's a place in Moab. We don't know that place. Be a cover to them from the face of the spoiler. That's somebody who goes in after a battle and takes war souvenirs. You know, I, I watch, and I don't know if I can mention the name, but, I, you know, it's, it's in good. I watch the uh, Pawn Stars, and they'll bring in swords, 
and guns. A lot of those swords that, that they, they bring into the store, somebody's trying to sell or pawn, they're souvenirs from the war, World War II, Vietnam. And what has happened is they gone in there and fought, and a German is slaughtered, and a guy goes in and grabs his gun. That's spoiling. For extortioner is at an end. I mean, look at the Antichrist and his people. Spoiler, extortioner. The spoiler ceases. It's going to stop. The oppressors. Oppressors. That's the Antichrist. But plural. Are consumed out of the land. That's when Jesus Christ comes. When Jesus Christ comes, the Antichrist and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire. Now the devil's locked up in chains for a thousand years. But the Antichrist and the false prophet, boom, right straight in, you know, th th that spot on, on the game, go directly to hell, go to hell, go directly to jail. The Antichrist and the false prophet don't go directly to hell, they go directly in the lake of fire. But those that the goats will go into hell. And it'll be judged at the, at the great white throne judgment, then go into the lake of fire. Millennium. Now look at it, right in the middle, we got the second advent, then we got the millennium, we got... And they'll turn around, and just read on. And in mercy, mercy. Well, that's not the Antichrist, that's not the devil. Never is anything of the devil and satanic. Ever have mercy. Shall be. Future tense. The throne be established. In mercy shall the throne be established. That's the throne of Jesus Christ. Is that the, is that the throne of David himself? You ask Uriah about mercy. Ask. Uh. Solomon about his mercy towards Jeroboam. That mercy, that throne is Jesus Christ. He, God, shall sit upon it in truth. David tried to hide his affair with Bathsheba. That's not true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. There it is. In the tabernacle of David, what's that? That's Matthew chapter 1, and that's Luke, I think it's chapter 3. That's the genealogy of a king. Both the adopted father Joseph, who will adopt the Lord Jesus Christ, and Mary herself, both of them can run their lineage back to David. Now, Joseph does it through uh, Solomon to David. Mary does it from Nathan, I think it's Nathan, to David. Mary's not the kingly line of Jesus Christ, but there's David. And the adopted father, legally in full rights to Joseph, to Jesus, runs it back through the kings. Minus five of them, I think. That are mentioned in Matthew chapter 1 to David the king. So the tabernacle is not just the throne of David, Joseph, but also the non kingly line, but of David. That's why we get the story of Ruth. That's David's family. Joab was family to David. His sister's sons were Joab and Abishai and the others. Judging. That's Jesus. And seeking judgment. That's Jesus. You realize there's going to be some kind of setup in the millennium. And I'm not completely sure about this, but Christians that earn an inheritance, not all Christians, are going to get particular cities. And I believe over those Christians are going to be the 12 apostles of the Lamb. 
And then there's going to be the Jewish priest operating out, out of, out of the, the temple, which the temple will be there. The law will be there. Or maybe it would be the, the, the Christians in the cities, then the priest, and then the 12 apostles of the Lamb, somewhere. And what you don't want to do, and Moses prescribed this in, in the law, first by his, his father-in-law, I forget his name, and then later on, God approves it for, for, for Moses. All right, go to the priest. Got to, you, got to, you got a judgment, you got to think, go to the priest. And if it be too hard, blood against blood, man against man, then you come to Moses. And Moses would be the Supreme Court. The appeals court. In the millennium, and maybe before God, Jesus, Moses, if your judgment makes it all the way to Jesus Christ and you're guilty, you're in trouble. Because you may say, well, that, I don't think it's true, but you may say that Christian, he, you know, he, he perverted judgment, which I don't think he would. Those priests, they could have perverted judgment. I don't think they would. Well, you know, Paul or Peter or John, you know, I prophetic, I don't think they would. And then maybe if Moses steps in or even David, well, I think they prefer judgment. I don't think they're going to. But if you make it up to Jesus Christ, you don't dare say, well, he perverted judgment. There is judgment in the millennium that, that there is, okay, there will be guilt. Seeking judgment and hasting righteousness Again, that all happens at the second advent. Jesus Christ will come in and bring the righteousness in as he gets out the unrighteous, the goats, and locks up the devil. We have heard of the pride of Moab. Pride is not good. I heard a preacher one time, oh, there's a good pride. No, there's not. <laughs> Show me. Chapter and verse in the book. Just one. Now the attitude with the context of verse 16 is. We have. In verse 3. In verse 1. We have the Jews. Running. Seeking help. In verse 6, the answer to the pride of Moabite is, no, I'm not going to help you. And now as I spoke about Esau and, and, and Germany and all the nations that do ill and evil and cursing of, of Israel, they will get a curse in return. And Moab's going to, well, you know, look who we are. We're not going to help them. Moab, what are you guys, what are you going to be so prideful about? All right, let's look at the Israel. Let's look at the, the parents of Israel. Jacob, Leah, Rachel, Bilhah, and I forget the other. All right, that could be kind of messy. Thanks to Laban, Ra Jacob did not get the, the wife he wanted, Rachel, and he got Leah instead, and then he worked hard seven more years and got Rachel, and Rachel couldn't have children. She gave her handmaid like Sarah did. And then Leah gave her handmaid. And boom, boom, boom. Okay, that's perfectly fine. And then we run to the parents of, of Jacob. We got Isaac and, and Rebecca. Rebecca was sent out by Abraham's servant. And she was a hardworking woman. She said, yeah, I'll go. She came and, and she met Isaac. And they became husband and wife. And then we run to Abraham and Sarai, before Abram and Sarai, which became Abraham and Sarah. Well, Abraham tells us later on, he lied, but he really did not lie because he said, you know what? She's my sister. She's the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. She's my half-sister. Okay. Except that. I think even the law of the United States, I think I have half 
brother and sister can marry. But let's look at Moab. Let's look at that. Let's look at your mother and father. All right, who is your father? Lot, a worldly man that was after the world. Though he came from the good stock of Abram, before Abram became Abraham. And Lot got drunk one night and had sexual relations and had a child named Moab. Well, who was that wife? Who was that the, the mother of Moab? Who's your mother? And I'm thinking here. I don't know relations. I'm trying to think again. His mother would be his aunt, I think. I don't know family relations, but let's run. The mother of Moab is Lot's daughter. So, grandchild. Moab is the grandchild of Lot being the nephew, I think. <laughs> You can email and correct me of his daughter, who is now his wife. What do you got to be proud about? My mother slept with my father, and here I am. So what's wrong with you, with your mother sleeping with your father? She was the daughter of my my father. Friend, that's exactly the same thing. It looks like to a point, I don't know family relations, but that looks like the same point that Goliath. Goliath had four brothers, and he was the father of those four. So I've heard of the pride of Moab. You ain't got nothing to be proud about. God says there are generations you are not allowed in the tabernacle. Thank the Lord, he said Moabite, he didn't say Moabitess. Because Moabitess is Ruth. So Israel, David, is related to Moabites through Ruth. <laughs> I can't get into these family things. So when Israel's on the run and they're looking for refuge in Moab, I'm going to say it my way, and I, I could be wrong, and forgive me for being wrong, but a double relationship. Running back to Lot, who is Abraham's nephew. I don't know how to figure that out. Running back to David, who is great, great, great grandmother, was a Moabite. This is all family, what I'm, I'm trying to say in a nutshell. And they're at war with each other. Oh, the Middle East is, is, a, is an angry, hateful, that God only said Israel. And that's what anger is. God said that land is Israel's land and nobody else is. That's what they're mad about. If there's no God and there's no Jehovah, then why are they all mad at Israel? Because God says, I've chosen Israel and only Israel. Ishmael, bye-bye. Well, well, Abraham had other wives with Kachuda. Bye bye, he gave him gifts. You know why they were angry with Joseph? Because Jacob singled out Joseph. The story between Jacob and Joseph and his brothers hating Joseph is the story of the Middle East. <laughs> well, that child is spoiled. <laughs> So he is very proud. <laughs> this is God speaking to Isaiah. Write this down. He's proud. We've heard of it. Okay. Isaiah, write this note. <laughs> yeah, what do you want me to write? He's very proud. Sound like America to me. Even if it's haunting, you know, just big headed. And his pride. Bingo again. And his wrath. He's got wrath with his with his pride against who? Who is the subject? Israel. We're not talking about Amen. We're not talking about the Philistines. We're not. We've been talking about Israel. And Moab is prideful against them, and he's angry with them. 
But his lies, he's a liar. To who? I'm going to take the context with he's lying to Israel. Shall not be so. I know a man who lost an office and he's all angry because he, he lost the office. And then people come back. Well, how dare you say he's prideful and all that. Man, just look at his pictures. The picture of him just says pride. I'm not going to mention his name. When the trump of God shall be blown, we're out of here. Therefore shall Moab howl for Moab. Pain, agony, despair, anguish, we're in trouble. Who? We are. Everyone shall howl. For the foundations of Ker Hethereth cities shall we mourn. Surely they are stricken by God. A curse them that curse you. Here comes the curse. For the fields of Heshbon language, it's just this bitter crying, this this oh is me. And the vine of Simna, the lords of the heathen. Have broken down the principal plants thereof. In the vineyards of the vines and all that. The Gentiles have come and teared up the teared up the plants. They are come even unto Jezer. They wander through the wilderness. Her branches stretched out. They are gone over the sea. They're they're going out. They're spreading out. Israel did the same thing. Israel's looking for a refuge. And they didn't get it in Moab. And now Moab's looking for a refuge. And they're not getting any. Therefore. Therefore I will be well with the weeping of Jazer, the vine of Sibna. I will water thee with my tears, O Heshbon and Elah. Yeah. For the shouting for the summer fruits. And for thy harvest is falling. When your harvest is falling, I mean, the crops fell off the trees. The grapes are falling off the vine. That's not where you want your crops. And gladness is taken away. And joy out of the plentiful field. And the vineyards there shall have no singing. Now, we see throughout the Bible when the vineyard when it comes time to make in the wine. When it comes time of gathering the grave, it is a time of celebration. It is a time of singing. It's a time of rejoicing. God has blessed us. And look at the bounty. Look at the wine. Look at the grapes. Look at the raisin. Look at the bounty of the land that God's given us. God said, it ain't going to happen. There'll be no music. Neither shall there be shouting. And shouting, hey, hallelujah, glory to God. The treaders shall tread out no wine. In their presses. And made their ventures shout, shouting with sea. You know, there's coming a time. It may even happen before the tribulation period in America. And I see it in the grocery stores now. Your fields are going to not reap, reap food. Your grocery store are going to be bare. And if you think that toilet paper not being on the shelf is bad. Listen, I'm going to a major store in Daytona Beach and I find many much food bare. I go to the spaghetti jar section and there's not many spaghetti jars. I go to the soda section. There's not many sodas. And it's like that in hardware. I go to get me a bag of frozen french fries because I love french fries. And I can't get a, there are times I go, I can't get a bag of french fries. They're gone. And what's happened to Moab, their pride on that, America's pride. America's going to fall in the same place. 
Go ahead. You can make all your money. You can filthily overcharge the capitalistic system. You can overcharge everybody and get all the money in the world. But you're not going to sit down with your money in your plate and your fork and knife and put ketchup on that plate if you can get ketchup and eat the money. When you don't thank God for the food that he gives us, and where I see they make watermelon guns and pumpkin shooting guns. And then on television, when, when, when they get a gun to shoot a gun, they aim at fruit. And they waste fruit. Pumpkins and watermelons are wasted. And the government wastes food. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap, America. Our dumpsters of, of restaurants are filthy, full of waste. America will pay. And I believe she's starting to pay now. I have made their ventures shouting to cease. There's no joy. There's no good crops. There's no. Wherefore my bowels inside you shall sound like a heart for Moab and my inward parts for courage. I don't know who, who's saying this. I will water thee with my tears. I don't know who's saying, I don't know if that's God or Isaiah or who. Now I mark my Bible with yellow circles around pronouns that represent God and Jesus. And I have a purple circle for men. And I have an, a black octagon for pronouns of the devil. I don't have these pronouns marked here because I don't know who we're talking about. I made the ventures shouting to see. That would be God. I will water thee with my tears, God. I, I don't know. I gotta admit, I don't know. It could be God all the way through. Wherefore my bowels shall sound like a heart for Moab. God? I mean, for God so loved the world, he's in anguish for what, what their sins have turned them to be. And it shall come to pass when it's it, when it is seen that Moab is weary on the high places, they're going to their high places where their gods are, small G-O-D-S. Like we'll see in Jeremiah, Lord willing. Well, you know, we've had all those frustrating, we had all these problems, and all these ecumenical problems and stuff like that, because we didn't offer the Queen of Heaven. And since we left off the Queen of Heaven, this is why we have all the ones, why we have all the deaths and all the problems. Well, that's what Moab's going to high places for. Oh, Baal, hear me. Oh, Baal, hear me. And Elijah's over there mocking him. And then the true God sends a fire down. And he shall come to his sanctuary to play, pray. God. And if this is a millennial reference, the, the devil is going to soak and sack Moab to the Antichrist. And in the end, Moab's going to turn to God. So it's not just the Jews. The Antichrist is going to torment the whole world. But he shall not prevail. And if that, that sanctuary is not God's sanctuary, it's Moab's sanctuary. Your gods can't help you. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning Moab since that time. 
There's a specific time. And we've been looking at the tribulation. We've been looking at the second advent. And we've been looking at the millennium. But now, now, when Isaiah's writing, the Lord has spoken, saying, within three years as the years of a hireling, an employee, and the glory of Moab shall be contemned with all that great multitude, and the remnant shall be very small and feeble. So here is this great multitude of Moabites. And they're going to be restricted to a very few and very weak. Each of these periods of time we're looking at, there's a small remnant. And under the Assyrian, under the Babylonian, and under the Roman, and under the German, and under the, the Antichrist, the devil in these nations against the, the, the men of God, the Israelites, and the people around them, just gets a full slaughter. And what's the result? Find me in Syri a Syrian today. You can't. Find me a Babylonian. You can't. Germany is near. You can find a German. But the, 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 the complex of the German people. They're down. They're gone. Find me the Roman. Okay, find me a Roman walking around wearing togas. And laurel leaves. And riding in chariots. They're gone. The Roman Empire is gone. And then when we get to the millennium, find for me the Antichrist kingdom and the false prophet kingdom. It's gone. Never to be revived again. Glory to God. 